Is your data secure? Sadly for most people, the answer is probably not. Whether it's vulnerable to surveillance or company failure or another single point of failure, it's just not. Uh, so our solution to this um, is, is called Pegos. It builds on top of IPFS and I'm going to give you a super quick intro to Pegos. Let me first start with what we're actually trying to solve here. So what do I want um, in this storage and sharing system? Three main categories, security, control, and convenience. We'll talk a little bit more about these, but security, like things like safe login, strong crypto, uh, hiding file metadata independent of DNS, this kind of thing. Control should be self-hostable. Um, you should have fine-grained access control. Uh, pseudonymous, you don't need a, a, a phone number to register, for example, or even an email address for that matter. Um, and convenience, anyone should be able to use it. You, don't, you shouldn't have to know anything about crypto or anything. So we want a web interface, we want about a login from any device. And it should be basically as convenient as Dropbox or Facebook. So let's start with the first one, control. So our overall architecture is obviously based on IPFS. So all of our data <coughs> is in IPFS itself. Uh, we use IPNS <coughs> for mutual pointers, um, basically mapping from a public key to a hash. And we also have a, a PKI server, which actually stores its data in IPFS as well. Um, and so yeah, basically a client, Pegos client talks to a Pegos server, which basically just proxies stuff to the other, the other stuff. Um, and the server explicitly is not trusted in any way uh, once you've got the client code. <coughs> so the basic structure, we have a, a global file system. Everyone gets space under their username. Uh, each user has a, a tree of symmetric keys uh, with cryptographic links between them. This is how we do access control. Uh, so you end up with uh, a location plus a key uh, is a, a capability uh, and that allows you to both retrieve and, and read a file. Um, we explicitly don't use convergent encryption because that leaks to the network the files that you have. Uh, this is the cryptory structure we use for access control. So on the left is a directory basically with a bunch of keys. Each box is a key. That's a subdirectory with some other keys. That's a file at the end with a fewer keys. And these links basically mean if you have the source key, you can derive the target key. And so whoever has this key can read the entire subtree. Uh, but someone who only has the, the file base key, they can obviously read the file. Uh, and what we do is we have these backlinks to have a well-defined path. So everything has a well-defined path, uh, but you can't, someone who can only read the file can't read anything else in the same directory or, or anything else higher up. Uh, so when, when you upload a file, we first chunk it into five meg chunks. Each uh, five meg is independently encrypted split them into fragments. Each of those will be uh, put in IPFS and those are then Merkle linked from uh, the encrypted metadata for whatever that is, the, the file fragment. And then the encrypted metadata itself we put in the, another nice data structure uh, in IPLD as well. Second topic, convenience. So I mentioned a web interface, uh, but the critical thing there is decentralized login. What does that even mean without a central server? <coughs> Fundamentally, we want people to be able to log in with a password. And so the way we do that in a safe way is we basically take your password, we salt it with your username, which is public, send it through a memory hard hashing function called script. That gives you three, three things out the other end. One is your, your root symmetric key, basically for your root directory and two key pairs, which are kind of your identity and the other ones used for social stuff. But, and yeah, these are never, never written to disk or transmitted. They're just stored in RAM when you're logged in. Uh, and finally, security. So how, how secure is that login? Um, obviously, it's only as strong as your password. You choose a, a terrible password, you will lose your data. Well, you will lose it, but it'll be exposed. Um, but, so, assuming you have a decent password, which obviously we have to help people with because people don't know what a secure <laughs> password is. Um, <laughs> so, we recommend 14 characters, alphanumeric, that's this many possibilities, a lot. Uh, back of the envelope calculation based on uh, the hashing for the uh, Litecoin network, which uses 
the same hash function we use but with simpler parameters, easier parameters. Uh, basically, that would take one GPU 300 billion years, or if you had 300 million GPUs, it would still take a thousand years. Uh, and the purchase cost of those GPUs would be about 300 billion US dollars. So basically, uh, even certain three letter agencies shouldn't be able to afford to crack this if you have a good password. Demo time. Right, so hopefully this works. Uh, so this is the our demo server we have. I'm just going to log in quickly. Let's see all this. Yep. So this is obviously it's also showing you what the the UI looks like at the moment. But what I want to do is show you streaming video. So bear in mind this is not streaming from the server. This is getting all the chunks independently, decrypting them locally in the browser, and then piping that through a local stream in the browser itself. And hopefully, uh, this will work. And hopefully it will have sound. We shall see. I don't think the sound's going through, but you can you can hear it. And um, yeah, so you can stream a, stream a movie, and that's you know this is not a particularly good machine. It's about five years old. Decrypting and playing at the same time, it, the browser is, is able to handle that. Um, so cool. If you want to, I can quickly show you the social side. So, well, indeed, other, the whole process, signing up. See, I've warned myself that's a terrible password. Um, so let's sign up with Alice. Um, and Bob as well. So we can do something else. If I try a password like password, then it tells us that's actually the most common password. Uh, or... Um, or I could say, and obviously without leaking that to the server. Uh, what I doing? One, two, three, four, five, six is the second most common password. Um, but correct horse battery stable. Say what? Correct horse battery stable. Uh, <laughs> is that in the top ten thousand? That we only have. Your password. All right. <laughs> correct horse. Well, it's not in the top 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> but it's anyway. It's a special case that because it's common knowledge. <laughs> uh, right, so are these the same? Uh, right, so we've signed up Alice, hopefully. Yep. Um, we don't have any files yet. Uh, Bob is signing up. Rightio. First things first, let's friend Alice. Hopefully that works. Da, da, da. If we go now back to Alice, we've got a friend request. We can accept that and reciprocate, which makes it bidirectional. And then. Going back to Bob, if we have a look at our friends. Oh, look, there's Alice. Wicked. All right, so now as Bob, let's upload something. Let's upload two things, in fact. So, here's one image. We can upload that. Let's do another one. Let's do a little movie. So there we go. We got. It's a little bit bigger, but yep. All right. So now this guy. Let's share that with Alice. Eventually, you won't have to type the name explicitly here, but yeah. <coughs> Sharing complete. So now, if we go back to Alice. And. So now we can see 
Oh, I'm in the top level. If we go there, we can see the file. We can view it in the browser um, or download it or whatever. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> the only other cool thing you can do is public links. And that basically puts the capability thing I mentioned at the beginning into the link itself. Other people have talked about similar things. Uh, and so if we open this in another tab, so, and there it is. Uh, and you notice I can't see the other file that's next to it. Um, and we can view that, whatever. And there we go. <laughs> cool. So that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, so check us out. Um, we don't have, we're not live yet, so we only have a demo server, but yeah. Uh, one of us is also in the audience, Kevin. Um, so have a talk to us afterwards. Any questions? <laughs> Uh, yes, yes. Um, the password plugin that you like so much, is it available online or did you develop it? Uh, it's just using scripts uh, as a standard hashing function. Um, yes, yes, but is it um, some popular library that you install from the internet or did you develop it by Scri yourself? Script itself is, is a popular library, yeah. Um, and is uh, pure ghost, that's how we pronounce it, yes? Yes. It's open source. Yes, it's all open source, it's all GPL or AGPL. Um, on GitHub? On GitHub, yeah. Cool. So the cool. GitHub is, yeah. is there. Any other questions going on? Yep. Um, did you make some more tests about how scalar it is, like how much overhead you have of the IPFS? Like how, how, how big data you put in there? So we, wanna, we want to be able to handle big data. We haven't particularly stress tested that yet, but there are no like we already shard everything, it's all like because we, you know, we chunk it all, that's all kind of done already. So the only potential problem is actually on the IPFS side when we're trying to pin a very large set. And if, if you have more files than you can fit on an individual IPFS node, eventually we're going to use IPFS cluster for that, yeah. but that's not quite there yet. So. And do, do, you, sorry, do, you, do you have like a notion of groups as well which you could share? So at the moment, it's, it's one to one. I mean, you can share the same thing with many people yeah, and you yeah, can yeah. unshare it with one of them and so on, but there's no group chat or whatever okay. yet. But yes, that's on the roadmap. All right, uh, time is ticking on. So if you have more questions for Ian, just talk to him. Yeah, please. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah.